Yeah. Not touch. No. What? That, that would just doesn't fit, though, does it? Doesn't look like it fits. That's why you have to like. Oh, I don't got. That this is the same. Uh huh. That's that why you need to do that. Uh huh. So um, you're all proud. Of it. So if you've got, I mean, I'll I'll try to. Can you say about integration? Well, yeah, I was using your def 10.1. No, I was doing it. Yeah. Um, and I was trying to, um, and they so. all, I was trying to make a big hole and make a big concrete maple. And you can dump all the concrete in there. So I suppose I've got an isomorphism from yeah. an algebra A to an, al to make, to an algebra B. Tell, tell us the rest of the story. Get it out of your system, then. Oh, so I can make a thermal thing with me. Mm -hmm. A robot thing. Mm -hmm. And then I can make a thermal thing with me. Mm -hmm. Treehouse with a robot. With the hole, it's, it's, it's on you. Jenny does realize that all of, this it, movie, it, all of his movie choices are actually centered around it, machines. What's it? What's it? Punch it. So he likes it, Transformers? It, it, that's what I would wait. You know, he hasn't had that yet. He thinks that about this. But like, uh, the, um, Power um, Rangers? The, uh, Body with a Chance of Meatballs, for example. If, if, what was it? Yeah, I think it's called a robot. Or a robot, a movie called a robot. Then a big thing is a robot. Benjamin, I'm really loving the style that you got today. With the dinosaur shirt. Did I? Uh huh. Did I tell? Did I tell you I put garbage my then baby then put it down and I put garbage in the in the bag and put it up then 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 you got it and that's it and punch it. And punch it. And and. Mm hmm. Let's suppose we have an isomorph. So then I'm going to do math now, if that's okay. Is that okay? Can we do math now? No? Um, Reddit is um, telling me that you can't view differentiation. They're saying you can view differentiation as linear nap from the set of functions differentiable on the interval. But I don't agree with that because then you'd have to say that integration's a math because that's how you prove their inverses. So I don't like this. Um, well, <laughs> integration and differentiation are they're inverse in a certain sense, but gotta be kind of a little bit, a little bit, a little bit tricky because. So right a question five years ago. Uh, so I mean, the thing is, if the derivatives of two functions are equal, that doesn't mean that they're the same functions, right? Um, even if they're equal in a connected set, all that gets you is that they differ by a constant. So that means differentiation is not one to one map. Therefore, it can't have an inverse. Mm -hmm. um, At least if it's going on sets of functions, right? So if you're going to talk about differentiation having a, being a vertical map, you need to be talking not about functions, but equivalence classes of functions. Um, now they're going to go on about differential geometry. If m is a connected oriented n manifold with finite good cover, then h of n of m. Um, is isomorphic to R, this isomorphism is given over to the integration of M. Hmm. It, it is a consequence of the Poincare duality. Mm -hmm. But I'm failing to see how it follows. Yeah. <laughs> this is on the stack exchange. Ah. Well, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of talk about <laughs> what integration really means. Well, I, I, for us here, um, we're talking about you know the integral we define in terms of like integral over a curve, right? Yeah. Right. So if the curve is, let's say, gamma of an interval i, then and we integrate a function, right? Um, of zeta star d zeta 
then by definition that was the integral over i, right? I mean, this is like a real subset of the reals um, of f of the gamma of t um, star d gamma dt dt. So, of course, usually I just have i is equal to like t, t1 to t2, you know, and so this integration, it's just a definite integral from t1 to t2, right? Mm -hmm. And so this, what it does is it says if you're given a function and a curve in the algebra, then you can associate to that a element of the algebra um, that's calculated by this integral. Um, and the integral on the right hand side is actually a vector of integrals because, um, you know, that's an a-valued expression, this f of gamma of t star to gamma dt. And when we integrate such a thing, we're saying integrate component-wise, um, much like the integral you do in calculus 3, mm -hmm. where they can integrate space curves and stuff like that. So, this is the integral, so here I'm just, this is an a, right? Yeah. And, um, like, Similar story if I was to do an integral in D, you know. Um, different variables. Sure. Change the letters. Yeah. <laughs> so the integral of say g of eta star d eta, and I'll say um, I don't know um, c bar equals gamma bar of uh, of i bar for lack of imagination. <laughs> is equal to the integral of t1 bar to t2 bar of g of um, gamma bar of t well, bar, let's go, I'll, I'll um, star um, d gamma bar dt dt. Now, of course, if I wanted to be really obnoxious, I could use a different symbol for the multiplication over here, you know? Yeah. Just go full. Or I could use juxtaposition both places. I mean, whatever. DT bar? Ah, yes. As long as I'm going down this silly path. Okay, so the point here, um, I have a suspicion that you can say something if you study, so like, um, I've got a curve, C, right? And this is A. And then that will give you a corresponding curve. Um, which I've called C bar under the isomorphism psi. So here's C bar is psi of C. Right? It's the image of C uh, under the isomorphism. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and then of course the other thing that's going on, it's not just the curve, there's also a function involved, right? Um, so I'll sort of illustrate that with a kind of a, a loopy thing, because the function, you know, it's it's doing something like that, right? Yeah. It's going from A back to A again, right? Whereas over here, you've got G being a mapping from B to B, right? Yes. I mean, technically, these don't have to be mappings on the whole algebra in either sense, but they have to be defined um, at least in some neighborhood of the curve over which we're integrating. See, my question is the Kamachar reaction limiting because, like, let's say you can do this, and then, but you know, um, A is non-differentiable. The, the psi of C is non-differentiable over B. You know what I'm saying? Psi of C. Like, like when when you do the isomorphism, you get a curve that's non-differentiable in the next algebra. Like, well, I don't think that can happen because, um, so like the psi is an, is an algebra isomorphism, which means it's linear. Mm -hmm. So linear map. And it's it's a it's an injective linear map too. Yeah. Which means that it's smooth, smooth inverse. So Whoa. it's going to take a smooth curve to a smooth curve. Even like because you know how we have like those like in the H two we have like those zeros. Yeah. Going down like this, so like you, you would run into a problem where it maps over that thing and it just gives you a non-differentiable line if it goes over. Well, the yeah, isomorphisms take units to units and zero divisors to zero divisors. Oh. So, I mean, 
if there's trouble in the domain, there's trouble in the range. Yeah, like right. the shared trouble because of the uh, one of the theorems we have is isomorphism. Is basically, you know, yeah. Well, a good a good intuition for what an isomorphism is is it's something that's just changing notation mm -hmm. for the algebra. So, like uh, uh, algebraists would would tend to think really the H two and R cross R are the same thing. They're not the same thing, right? I mean, they're different point sets, mm -hmm. but um, in terms of their algebraic structure, they're really the same. It's just different notation for the same algebra. That's the kind of thinking, you know? Yeah. Um, so, C bar is a, is a curve from C, yeah. right? How do we take F and produce a G? How do we transport the function on A to a corresponding length function on G? I think we basically can play this game. So if I want a function on g, what I can do is I can go, I start here, I go back over here, right? I follow, excuse me, go back over to here, just stick with my silly picture, go back over to here, and then I follow f, do 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 like that, mm -hmm. and then I go, I jump over that, and then I go back, and I go back, <laughs> like that. <laughs> so in other words, I set g equal to, let's see here, last is first. So the last was psi. F is in the middle. And okay. psi, yeah. psi inverse. Uh, that, that is a but, yeah. That's a function um, in the B algebra, which corresponds uniquely to the given function in the A algebra. Over yeah. the A algebra. I thought that was what you were going to do. I would just you usually do like two different, you know? Oh, yes, yes. This is not. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, have, I think it's the first time I've ever showed you these like yeah. loop diagrams, yeah. whatever you call them. But, no, I got it. I was just like, see, is he gonna? I was like, you're was right. Nice. I usually, I usually draw another copy of A down here, another copy of B down here, and then. Yeah, but I, know, I, I, I got it. I was, I got it pretty quick. Maybe that picture is equivalent. So, my, my, um, my, my, my suspicion, and I think we probably proved this, is that the integral over C of um, f of zeta star d zeta, right? Um, I suspect that's going to be equal to the integral over c bar of psi composed with f composed with psi inverse of eta star d zeta, where of course c bar is equal to psi, let's see, Now that can't quite be true. Actually, this, this can't this can't be true, as it's stated without further. And can you tell me why? Like, why is this? Why is this impossible? It's an apples and oranges kind of problem. No. I'll start you out. This is an integral over a. So the answer here is an A. An A. No. Oh. Uh, that's an integral in G. An integral in, in, in B. B, but the answer's an A number. Yeah, so it, you know, we need there have, there's gotta be another isomorphism here to make this make sense. Mm -hmm. So my inclination is just, just to uh, I mean you could put psi over here, you could put psi inverse over here, kind of, you know. So I, I'll put the psi inverse. And all that. But wouldn't that mean you over there you have to have a psi and make it a B number? Or you could put the psi over here. Yeah, okay. I mean, that, that, it, it's like one oh, okay. you know. Just, yeah, okay. You, you just gotta make sure it ends a B number. Right, so then B, B, yeah. B matches B. Um, and of course you could, uh, I mean that, that's my claim. Just making sense, make, you know, checking that the formula work does not, the, the checking that the formula has like the right kind of domains and ranges does not constitute a proof of right. It's just like the first, mm -hmm. <laughs> the first thing, right? Um, but I, I think the proof here is just, um,
probably just going to be an exercise in chain rule. Let me, let me try to focus here on the... Um, no, I mean, we could, you want to use your example from 10.6 and see what happens? You mean the one on page 11? I'm on page 46. Oh, wait a minute. I'm in a different paper. Yeah. <laughs> Which paper you got? Uh, I'm on your uh, algebra or a calculator. Yeah. A calculus or algebra. So the, the first one? Uh, so page 46, example 10.6. Um, it's, it's a nice looking one, that's why I suggest it. Oh, the, uh, this is the integral over. Over the hyperbolics? Mm. Ah, I see. This is what I was mm -hmm. using as like my reference frame. Yeah. Um, one more thing, and then I'll, I'll try that. But, um, so essentially, this uh, integral, the, the real sort of rubber hits the road when you look at. Um, ultimately becomes, the thing of interest becomes psi of f of psi inverse of, you know, and then let's say um, that whatever the parameterization is, let's call it phi, you know, phi of t bar, right? Star d phi dt bar bar. Don't you have another dt? And then, yeah, that gets integrated over the bar. I'm just, I'm saying that's the, that's the integrand, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, fair enough, dt bar. So like that's, yeah. So t bar one to t bar two. Um, also, my other question was, so you know how we define integration as area under a curve? Is that how like, it, what happens if you, like, when you transpose over uh, an algebra, does that necessarily hold true? Like, yeah, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it, it's not. Integrals over an algebra are more like work under, they're line integrals. Mm -hmm. So each component corresponds to the work done by a particular force. If so, if, if, if A is like n dimensional, okay. every, um, every component of the integral corresponds to like a line integral of a particular vector field associated to the function. Okay. So for complex, you get, um, i trying to remember, you get, I think you get, you know, u dx minus v dy mm -hmm. for the real component, and you get um, u dx plus v dy for the imaginary component. So you get, when you calculate a complex line integral, of u plus iv, that function, yeah. you're, you're cal calculating at one time two corresponding real line integrals, one for the vector field u comma minus v, the other for the vector field um, um, u comma v, I guess. And so like, there, so you're, you're calculating work done by not just one vector field, but like a pair of vector fields. Mm -hmm. Does that correspond directly to some area under a curve? I, I would say no. I mean, you could, you could conjure up a, a curve that it's the area under, but I think it's artificial. Um, I think the better picture is to think about, it's a way of thinking about an ensemble of vector fields all at once and calculating the work done by all of them. And um, like a complex number gives you a pair of real numbers, so you can calculate the work done by two vector fields. But I haven't really explored that idea much more deeply than that. You know, here, if we, um, hmm, so the integral is linear, right? And um, you can pull out constants, right? So I think if you think about taking psi inverse of this, there's good reason to see that that should be equal to the integral from t bar 1 to t bar 2 of f of psi inverse of phi of t bar star d phi d t bar. And the reason I say that is that I can pass the psi inverse inside the integral because the reason I can do that is this is a linear map. 
So you could write it as, you could pick a basis, you could write this as like a matrix multiplication times a vector, all right? And that matrix multiplication is just a bunch of scalar multiplications and additions. So I can bring it inside the integral. Oh, I think, yeah. And also, and like, mathematically, it. like, if you think about, like, where you're going to, um, like, I, I just start from the inside, like, so psi inverse, we're going from B to A, and then psi, and then, you know, you do F, which is an A, and then you map it to psi, and then, you, and then at the end, you'd have to go back. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that, that end, like, the, that end, that end part, like, you're literally just going, you're just doing that, you're going straight back to forth. Does that make sense? So, mm -hmm. uh, psi inverse of phi, all right, so you're going from B to A. F is an A, you do F. Then you go psi to B, do the integral, and then you come straight back. I say it again. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, but all you do is just stop the straight back. So once you stop the integral, you just, what's the point? Oh, here. Uh, um, see, this This is, we're, we're looking at, I believe, I could be wrong. I it's believe a this is a robot, yes. Yes, made out of robots. Made, made out of what? Lego sets. Lego sets, okay, yes, yes. Um, is it a good robot or a bad robot? Good robot. Good robot. What's its, what's its, what's its function? What does it do? Um, it does nothing. It does nothing? I don't know. It's just for looking cool? Interesting. So it works for the government then? Is it a government robot? No. It's no? A okay. It's a happy robot. Oh, yeah, that's a good clarification. No, I can't be mad at the government. I said the government robot. He says, no, it's a happy robot. <laughs> wow. What? No, I, was, uh, I, was, I didn't teach him that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, <the> house. <laughs> oh, oh, it's got an adjustable piece. Um, I was yeah. giving my passport and the guy was like, you need, a, you need an appointment. And I was like, I just like stare at him and he just like looks at me. That's ah, okay. So I needed an appointment to go in. And he gave a, and he You're like, like, there's nobody here, dude, right? No, I didn't. Yeah, there one there wasn't anybody there. I just looked at him for a while. He's like, eh, no, whatever. <laughs> so, I, well, just, Jenny, I didn't, I didn't Jenny, do anything. I so, just looked at him. Jenny had this experience trying to get her car, get a car inspected back where we used to live. She went in and 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 she's and they're like. She's like, I need to get the car inspected, because in Virginia, there's this annoying thing called car inspection you have to do. Do they have that in Georgia, too? No. That's good. You should fight it tooth and nail, because it's nothing more than that. Well, the stupid thing is, I could talk about this for a while, but anyway, I'm glad to be free of my car inspection. It's a colossal waste of time in Virginia. I'm trying to get rid of my emissions stuff, too. I don't get having to pass emissions. I've moved to, moved to Alabama. But, um, uh, but uh, there's certain counties in Georgia you don't have to. It's just a uh, county. Right, right. But, um, anyway, she got me, she was like, can I get the car inspected? And like, oh, it's only by uh, appointment. And she's like, could I make an appointment? And we're like, well, sure. And she's like, when do you have it? Do you have she's like, sure. And she's like, do you have me open? She's like, and they're like, yeah, we have one over now. What? What's wrong with you people? Like, just. <laughs> it's okay. I was like, I was. The thing is, they don't make money on inspections, so it's in their best interest to like, get rid of people. Um, have you watched Utopia? Utopia? Yeah, I think so. No, no, it's Zootopia. Oh, Zootopia. Yeah, yeah that's... It was funny, because he was playing that movie during the thing, and like, you know the government agents? They're sloths. <laughs> that's right. That's the most painful part of that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um... That is funny. Yeah, and uh... I was, I was like, man, this is really ironic here. Yeah. Well, oh, well, I got my passport. Let's see here. I got the application. I, so, um, so this, um, so, so phi is the parameter, phi parameterizes C bar, mm -hmm. right? So what that means is that, like, phi of T bar, is an element of psi of c, right? Yes. Which means that there exists t um, <clears throat> in t1 to t2 
such that um, uh, um, all right, so I should have made this T-bar just to, you know, be more obnoxious. Here, T-bar, T-bar. Is that better? No, T-bar. Such that T-bar of T-bar, right, is equal to what? It's equal to um, psi of phi of t. See, because, I mean, this is, the, there has to be a connection between the, param the curve, the parameterization of the initial curve C in the algebra A and the image curve C bar, right? Yeah. And so, like, you have a connection between those two things. And, um, of course, you can also then see that psi inverse of phi bar of t bar, right, is equal to what? It's equal to phi of t, right? And then you can you can go further. You can differentiate this um, with respect to t, you know. So um, So if I differentiate that with respect to t, I believe I get something along those lines. Oh my bad. When I bring that, when I bring this psi inverse here, I was too glib. I bring that psi inverse, it doesn't just hit this, it hits both things. Ooh. So I have neglected. There's, there's a psi inverse right there that I'm supposed to have. And it's good that it's there because when I differentiate this, you know, um, ddt of psi inverse of phi bar of phi bar. That should get I think I should get psi inverse of phi bar t bar. Is, is to see that this is most likely, once we sort through the chain rule, um, f of, um, this is most likely f of phi of t um, star uh, d phi dt times dt bar, excuse me, dt dt. <laughs> dt dt bar dt bar and then <clears throat> once you have that then the u substitution basically allows you to cancel the t bars and you're just left back to the integral in a which is the claim i mean this is how ordinary u substitution is proved it's ultimately just like taking a careful look at the chain rule and then sorting through the integration. And so this is, in some sense, what we're discussing is a U substitution for algebras. But the substitution is an isomorphism. But it's, do I say morally, kind of the same thing. Um, and so, Oh, this is a few bar. But I guess to be more careful, it's 
Oh. Anyway, I think it's true, but like the notation is kind of a mess here. I'm, so um, I've done enough here to, to to believe that it's true, but I think uh, I'm also impatient to produce a fully formal rigorous proof at the moment. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna side. Uh, let, let's uh, do what you suggested ten minutes ago. Do example ten point six, right? Yeah. Uh, now you got me stuck. On this, so I'm trying to go back. Oh, okay. No, we didn't work on this. Okay, so if you think about it backwards, um, you would be taking a derivative of something that. So you'd get a okay. So, like, so your inside would be something, and that would, so that was your inside before, right? To the derivative. So wait, what are we taking a derivative with respect to d t bar? Yeah. So we have d phi d t. Oh. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm hmm. And that was on the inside. So yeah, I would say the same with this. Um, when we're, we're, you're trying to get to the f of phi, I think you get something simpler because if you know if you, I'm not really doing, I'm not thinking about the substitution. Just like straight up chain rule, you know. Uh, Inside, like if if you think about having the the under the we don't we have an unknown something that we're taking a derivative of and you get spit out that you know so that d phi term um, so you know if you think about it as like taking a derivative you get this. Uh, term because that's what you're taking that the derivative respect to. So this is your inside term. You need something. That means this, because f is what we're doing, right? F is our function. So this would be f would this be f to the something or no? Our inside, and that's what's going to pop out because that's what's going to be the dt. So I don't really care about that. So this would just be just something. Uh, Yeah, oh, wait, 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 that right there, um, oh no, I don't think that's, I don't think that's true. So, um, here I'm differentiating a composite, so usually, like, the chain rule likely holds, and so the derivative, the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside, you know? Mm -hmm. But the thing is here, the outside function is a linear function, like psi inverse is a linear function. So the derivative <coughs> of the li linear function is the function itself. And um, so actually, I, I don't. I'm a little bit. See, I got close. I'm sure, I should really write that. Wait. So are we, we're taking the derivative of f. Right, get the function f of whatever's inside. 
Could you pull it out? Because because uh, this is an A, right? And DT is an A. We're taking we're taking the derivative of respect of T, not T bar. Well, the T is a real variable. I mean, it's the parameter of the curve. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, oh wait, that makes sense because this would be a point. I'm, I'm like working backwards, like I'm working from the standpoint of we already, like we have the function above, we're trying to find the function below. Yeah, I think actually this is supposed to be, again, I'm a little bit sketchy here, but I think this actually should be psi inverse of this. So what happens is you have psi inverse of t phi, d phi bar, d t bar. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I need a notation here, but that should have been. Oh, that should have been t bar actually. T bar that should be t bar t. Oh, see, that's not quite right either. I don't know. My, my notation is not clear enough to. Oh, but I see. I think this is this <coughs> difficult as well. See, because I guess. Okay, so first phi, what do we define as phi? These are loop nodes. Uh. What are we defining as phi? Phi? That parameterization, right? Phi is the, um, the parameterization of the initial curve. Yeah, so... It's related to phi bar, according to this equation right here. Yeah, no, but my thing is, um, what I'm saying is, like, couldn't you just, like, chuck it? Because you could say that f of psi inverse is mapping that parameterization back over to a. And so you just have f of something in a, right? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is f of phi of t. Yes, that's my point. So, uh, I don't know, uh, what, what, Z, right? And then if, if you do it that way, you can just go to your paper and say, um, and then what, I, what I'm saying is, this is a parameterization that's getting mapped over back to A. Uh -huh. And so, you're only taking the integral, like the actual A part of it. This, this, this thing. Uh -huh. That thing. And so, if you took the parameterization of just that, um, then uh, it should, I think, I think your initial idea was actually really a good idea, which is to try to work, work out an example of this, like I think we should do that. Okay. I mean, in summary, Andrew, like, I don't think this is wrong, I just don't think it's clear enough to be helpful <laughs> to us. Um, so, like, let, oh, rats. I lost my formula. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I got it. We're almost forced to it, right? Yeah. So we want to study the integration, we want to contrast H2 versus r cross r, right? Mm -hmm. And so what, what's, our, what's our isomorphism? Psi of um, x plus jy, what is it equal to? Is it, it's, 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 it's x plus y, x minus y, is it? Yeah. And what's, what's the inverse, what's the inverse formula? That's a great question. Psi inverse of say a comma b, what's that equal to? Uh, a plus jb? Yeah, I think it's a plus a plus b. I want to say it's over two. Because like if you put one and one here, that should be the identity. Yeah. So one plus one over two. That's, and then plus j times what is it? Um, I think it's I want to say it's a so the j in r cross r is one minus one. Mm -hmm. Our way of thinking, so this should be like a 
minus b, so then when we put 1 minus 1, we get 1 plus 1, which is 2 over, I, th I think this is the inverse map, if memory serves me correctly. I think we'll recover it as we go. Okay. Well, I'll just leave that there. So, like, the example 10.6 is like a generic. Yeah. You notice in 10.6, no curve is actually stated, right? No. Um, so, like, example 10.6, I, I, I basically say, okay, so the integral of f of zeta, f d zeta, so I'm, I'm, um, is what is it? It's the integral over C of um, U dx plus V dy plus J times the integral of V dy um, plus U dx. So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm expressing the um, integral over the algebra in terms of real line integrals uh, just as a means of like trying to tell the reader what actually is that in your integral in H2 look like in terms of integrals that you're somewhat familiar with from like calculus 3 or something, right? Because you know what these mean in calculus 3, right? Yeah. Um, again, like the work done by u comma v, the work done by, wait a minute, it's the same integral? A typo. That's the same integral? There's a typo there. It's supposed to be v and x. It's supposed to be in u and flipped. This is a, this is a, this is a typo in my in my paper there. Oh man, the, 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 the preamble to it, if you look at the calculation leading to it, equation 144, I there have j v dx dt plus u dy dt. So if you kind of think yeah. heuristically of canceling the dt's, it gives you v dx plus u dy, which is not what I've written in the next line, unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, there's another thing to fix. I need to update these papers. I need to like make a... a a master list of all the errors we found and go back and like update these papers. Anyway, okay, so what then is the, so like the question is, what's the corresponding integral in, I mean, all right, so just give me a second here, five words. In R cross R, which is, what's the generic integral in R cross R look like? Right, so we have something like, you know, g1, g2, and that's a function over there, right? So we could call this thing g, right? And you can talk about the integral over, um, and so the integral there, it's going to be over, I'll, I'll just, I'll use c for a generic curve for this for the moment uh, of g. Um, D, I'll use eta. Um, but the thing is that C um, and so this is the integral from say T1 to T2 of G1 Let's say g1 of, I need to name, uh, let's say phi of g, I'm, I'm not using the, I'm just using c, I'm not putting bars and stuff here at the moment, I hope that's okay, phi of t, you know, um, comma, g2 of phi of t, right, um, times d phi dt. 
right? Where that's the multiplication in r cross r, right? But if we're assuming that g is r cross r differentiable, right? Yeah. Um, then remember that means that g is actually, we can actually express g as a function of, it's a pair of functions where the first component is just a function of the first and the second is just a function of the second. So if we, if we let phi itself be like phi 1, phi 2 like that, just that kind of, then we can really rewrite this as interval from t1 to t2 of like g1 of phi 1 of t comma g2 of phi 2 of t, right? And that gets multiplied by what? Well, d phi dt, which of course is d phi 1 dt comma d phi 2 dt, right? Now, I'm, I'm already kind of like breaking, um, breaking from the notation that's used in example 2. 10.6 because in example 10.6 I wouldn't really put a I would put like you know uh, I, I I'm actually using x and y for in place of p1 and p2 for what it's worth but let's continue here now this is the multiplication in r cross r right how does that work remember how the multiplication in r cross r works yeah it's component wise right so when I multiply this out what we really get is integral from t1 to t2 of g1 of phi1 of t. phi1, or d phi1, dt, uh, comma, g2, phi2, um, d phi, d phi2, dt, dt, over dt, comma, dt. Um, so let's see here. Another, another way to get at this is if I, if I use the same notation that's employed in example 10.6, I really should probably say something like this. The integral over C of G1 comma G2 on DX comma DY, right, is equal to what? I mean, what is this? Uh, it should be the integral of G1 X DX1. G1 DX comma. Yeah, integral uh, G2 DY, right. So the, um, the integral in r cross r uh, of a function on r cross r, it's really just a pair of real integrals. Yep. Which we knew. So, but, uh, huh. <laughs> What's up? Anything? Oh, it's just r cross r is. Such a perverse example in some sense, but cool. I've not really thought about this before. Um, really, I feel like I learned this in like count three. Oh, not well. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, we are using count three, so I understand the feeling. But um, so the claim then is that there's a connection between the integral we wrote at the end here, you know, this notion of integration, right? Mm -hmm. And that notion of integration, there's got to be some kind of back and forth between those two formulas. But the... The back and forth cannot be expressed at the level, of, like this notation we're currently using, I don't think can capture the claim. Like it, it's uh, all right. So <clears throat> I think to to actually experience <laughs> the claim, we have to pick a specific function and a specific curve and do the integrals, and then see how the integral plays out in the other side. You know. Okay, um, 
I mean, I, I would start with just like a simple one, like whatever, like a uh, horizontal, not horizontal, whatever. Yeah, whatever a line is. Mm -hmm. Sure. J. Yeah. Let's look. I like that. I like that. So let's let's take the line that goes from like the origin over here to this point. You know, mm -hmm. um, maybe like one plus j over two. Not one plus j over two. One plus <sighs> two plus j. Let's let it go to two plus j from the origin to two. Let that let let's let that be the curve. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, so that's the curve. What's the corresponding? Like first things first, if we if we map on your side R cross R, right? What's the image curve corresponding to that? So you have x minus y. So two or the one it'd be three two. Be the mapping for the origin of uh -huh. the two. And you're mapping. So the origin maps to the origin, right? Yeah, so this would, would be the mapping to the point. That's what I'm saying, the point three two. Oh, so we're oh, wait, no, no, okay. we have a j, I forgot. What did we say was j? 2 plus, two plus j, if you did to here, what we get? So x is, x is 2, y is 1. Yeah. Yeah, so you're mapping to 3, 2, or to 3, 1. Uh, 3, you said 3, 1, 3, okay, 3, 1, right, very good. Now, you just assume that the um, image curve of LC bar um, is, uh, is a line. How did you know that? Uh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> So the thing is size and linear map, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes lines to lines. And um, all right, so that there's a curve. Now we need to think of function. So um, my opening move for the function, I always just think of the square function. Because like the square, the square function, it's you know a little bit interesting, but not too interesting, you know. So f of z equals z squared. gives us what? It gives us x squared um, plus y squared plus 2jxy. All right. 
Now, what was our prescription? Our transfer function, and she had to go was psi inverse composed without composed of psi, right? Yeah. Because that 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 um, last dispersed. Is that right? Is it your G? Mm, yeah, because you're starting. Yeah, that's where you want to end. Oh, yeah. yeah. You think I'm wrong? I, I think I'm. But thing, I, I think that can't be right because it has H2 as its domain. I, I think I need to go the other way. So like, psi inverse starts here. Yeah. yeah. And it goes here, F does its thing, and then psi goes back. So what does the formula for G look like? G, uh, I'll use A, B, come on. It found the B just is that supposed to be psi of F of psi inverse of A B, right? What's psi inverse of A B? Psi inverse of A B would be a mapping from that back to that. Yes, yeah, so we have a formula. A, B, yeah, a plus B over two J and A minus B over two. Very good. Now we we square that thing, right? So that gives us psi of, let's see, f does what? It squares. So you got a plus b over 2 squared um, plus a minus b over 2 squared, right? Mm -hmm. Plus twice j times um, a plus b over 2 times a minus b over 2. And I think it's worth our you just go out worth our worth our while to try to simplify that, you know. Uh, a squared plus b squared a two a b over four plus uh, a squared plus b squared over four plus uh, you should a squared minus b squared mm -hmm. over four. No, oh, over eight. No. Over no, 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 actually, we should knock it out. Yeah, when we when we square this, we get a an AB term. Yeah. When we square that, we get a minus AB term. Square. Those guys cancel. Yeah. But we get an A squared over four, an A squared over four. Yeah. So we get A squared over two from that. We also get B plus you know plus B squared over four plus B squared over four, which makes it B squared over two. Yeah. And then you get two A or yeah two AB. I think that's 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 these two, right? And you get a 2AB on this one, because... Um, I don't think you do, though, because when this squares, we get the cross term being 2AB over 2. Mm-hmm. Two, excuse me, 2AB over 4. Yeah, but you... Sh um, yeah, but the difference of sums would just give you A squared plus B squared, so you'd still have a 2AB somewhere. Um, from the first turn, yeah. right? But this one, no, you don't. Yeah. that one gives me a minus 2ab. The difference of a square? I thought it all, always was the same thing. Well, that's not a difference. That's oh. not a difference of squares, that's just a minus yeah, two squared. Yeah, I'm thinking over. That one over there yeah. is difference of squares for yeah. sure. I think. And that's okay. Twos cancel, yeah. and you get what? Plus, um, like, j over 2, um, a squared yeah, like, like, minus b uh -huh. squared. Yeah. So that, that's looking a little bit better, <laughs> right? Now we got to feed that thing to psi. Uh -huh. And something very funny is going to happen when we do that, I think. You know? Because if I asked you what the squared function was on R cross R, going, starting with this, you'd be like, x squared minus one. It's a squared comma b squared, right? What do you think is going to happen here? If you feed it through, yeah, well, it's going to happen. I mean, I'm not sure yet, but I'm guessing. When we, so we're supposed to add the x and y components, and then difference of x and y components, right? Um, so you have the same denominator, so you get rid of your b term on one, and you're gonna get your, and then you're gonna get rid of your a term on the other. 